Today we're going to talk about a number of strategies to find determinants. Let's start. Say we've got the matrix 2, 0, 0, 0, 3, 0, 0, 0, 1, and we need to find the determinant of this matrix. Here's the idea that I want you to think about. Idea. If you're trying to find the determinant of a diagonal matrix, the determinant is the product of the diagonal entries. This matrix that we have right here is diagonal because all of the non-zero entries are in the i comma i position along the main diagonal, which means that we can find the determinant by multiplying the diagonal entries. Here we have 2 by 3 by 1, which is 6. Say we've got a different matrix. Say we've got 3, 0, 0, 5, 4, 0, 2, 2, 1, and we wanted to find the determinant. This is not a diagonal matrix. However, it is triangular. In particular, it is lower triangular because all of the non-zero entries occur below the main diagonal. Here's the idea. For lower triangular matrices, the determinant is also the product of the diagonal entries. This also works for upper triangular. So we've got these diagonal entries here, and the determinant is going to be 3 by 4 by 1, which is 12. Say we've got a similar looking matrix, 0, 0, 1, 0, 4, 5, 3, 2, 8, and we want to find the determinant of this matrix. It actually looks triangular, but it's not triangular. We always orient ourselves along the main diagonal. And this matrix has non-zero entries both above the main diagonal and below the main diagonal. So this is not a triangular matrix, and we can't use the same trick that we used before. However, we can always fall back on our cofactor expansion. Here's the idea. We're going to use the cofactor expansion, but we're going to pick cleverly and use the cofactor expansion along the best row or column. In this case, we want to use a cofactor expansion along a row or column that has a lot of zeros. And in this case, I see two good options. So we can use the first row or we can use the first column. Let's do both. So this non-zero entry here, this one, is in the one comma three position. If we're going to use that one to find our cofactor expansion, we're gonna get zero plus zero plus negative one to the one plus three times one times the determinant of what's left when we erase the row and column that one is in. And that is the determinant of the matrix zero, four, three, two, which is just taking the determinant of the two by two matrix, this is gonna be one, one, negative 12. Or we could use the first column and you'll notice that this non-zero entry three is in the third row and the first column. So if we expanded along the first column, we're gonna get negative one to the three plus one times three times the determinant of what's left when we ignore the row and column that three is in. So this is going to be the determinant of zero, one, four, five. So we're going to get one times three times negative four, which is negative 12. All right, say we've got a matrix like this, zero, one, zero, 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 one, one, zero, zero and we want to find the determinant. Here's an idea that might be useful. Idea, swapping two rows negates the determinant. So what we can do is this. We can swap, say, the first and the second row, and we're going to get negative one times the determinant of the resulting matrix, zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero. And we can do this trick again. We can swap the first row and the third row to get negative one times negative one times one zero 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 one zero 
zero, zero, 001. And now you can see why we did this. We transformed our original matrix into a matrix where it's really, really easy to find the determinants. Here's what we get. Negative 1 times negative 1 times the determinant of the 3 by 3 identity matrix, which is negative 1 times negative 1 times 1, which is 1. All right, we can actually combine a number of things to do problems featuring determinants of matrices that are a little bit more abstract. So say I gave you the matrix A, B, C, D. I'm not going to tell you what those are, but I will tell you that the determinant of this matrix is 2. Now I want you to find 4A, 4C, B, D. What's the determinant of this matrix? Here are a few ideas for you. Scaling a row scales the determinant by the same factor. You'll see here that the first row in our mystery matrix is a multiple of 4. We can pull out that 4 and multiply that by the determinant of A, C, B, D. Here, what we've done is scaled. Here, you'll notice that we're not quite in the right position, because in the top right corner, we've got C, but in our original matrix, in the top right corner, we've got B. So here's a second idea for you. Taking the transpose of a matrix doesn't change the determinants. So we can set this equal to 4 times the transpose of our matrix here, and we'll get A, B, C, D. That is 4 by 2, which is 8. Here, of course, we just used the transpose. I hope this has helped you find a number of new strategies to find determinants of matrices. See you next time. Remember to like and subscribe. New videos every week.